1988, physicist Stephen Hawking released a book that aimed to do something rare, explain the origins, mechanics, and fate of the universe to a general audience, without requiring advanced math or a physics degree. We find ourselves in a bewildering world, he wrote, and from that truth he launched us on a journey through the cosmos. A brief history of time became a global sensation, guiding readers through black holes, time travel, the Big Bang, and the laws of reality. Hawking's brilliance lay in translating the dance of galaxies and the whispers of quantum particles into a story anyone could follow. This video breaks down the book's core ideas, not just what they are but why they matter, rekindling our curiosity. Imagine standing beneath a canopy of stars, each one following invisible rules you can almost grasp. Whether you're new to cosmology or revisiting familiar ground, this is the story of how modern science has explored some of the oldest and biggest questions of all time. Hawking begins not with formulas but with big questions. Where did the universe come from? Has it always existed? Is it infinite? What is time? And could it ever run backward? These aren't just abstract riddles. Hawking treats them as serious scientific problems, ones we can tackle with logic, evidence, and math. Throughout history humans have searched for answers, ancient myths spoke of gods and creation. Today we use telescopes, satellites, and particle accelerators. Yet even with advanced tools the questions remain humbling. Are we alone? Why does the universe have this shape? Could it have turned out differently? Hawking argues that to answer such questions we need to bring together two powerful theories, Einstein's general relativity, which explains gravity and space-time, and quantum mechanics, which governs the subatomic world. But these two pillars often contradict each other, reconciling them remains one of science's greatest challenges. Early in the book, Hawking sets the tone, this isn't just a physics lesson, it's a deeper search for meaning. The laws of physics, he suggests, are like a map, one that might lead us from the beginning of time to its end and maybe even help us understand our place within it. To understand where we are, Hawking walks us through our evolving view of the cosmos. For much of history, we believed everything revolved around us. Then came Copernicus, who proposed that Earth orbits the Sun. Galileo confirmed it with his telescope and Kepler refined it with mathematical laws of motion. Then, Isaac Newton changed everything. With his laws of motion and gravity, Newton offered a framework that explained everything from falling apples to planetary orbits. The universe became predictable, rational, governed by forces we could calculate. In Newton's model, space was fixed, and time ticked uniformly everywhere. For over two centuries, Newtonian physics ruled. It accurately predicted tides, eclipses, and planetary motion. Scientists built upon it. But as Hawking points out, it had limits. Newton's universe was elegant, but incomplete. In the early 20th century Albert Einstein redefined space and time. His theories of special and general relativity didn't just improve on Newton, they transformed our understanding of the cosmos. Einstein showed that space and time are part of a single flexible fabric, space-time. Massive objects like stars and planets don't just sit in space, they bend it. That bending is gravity. Imagine space as a stretchy sheet. A heavy object makes a dip, smaller ones roll toward it. That's gravity, reimagined. Even more surprising, time is affected by gravity. Near massive objects, time moves more slowly. This isn't science fiction, it's measurable. GPS satellites correct for it constantly. Special relativity adds another twist. The speed of light is constant for all observers. To preserve that, space and time must stretch or shrink depending on your speed. Time, it turns out, is relative. Einstein's general relativity gave scientists a powerful tool to understand the universe on large scales, but even he didn't fully trust what his equations suggested. His math showed the universe should be expanding or contracting, it couldn't remain static. Still Einstein believed in a steady, eternal cosmos, so he added a fudge factor to keep things balanced, the cosmological constant. Then came a discovery that changed everything. In the 1920s Edwin Hubble observed that distant galaxies were moving away from us, and the farther they were the faster they receded. It wasn't random, it was a clear pattern, the universe was expanding. This was a turning point. Hubble provided observational proof that space itself was stretching. Einstein's original equations were right after all. 
he later called the cosmological constant his greatest blunder. So what happened at the Big Bang? According to Hawking and modern cosmology, the entire universe began as a singularity, a point of infinite density and temperature. Not just a dense clump of matter, but a place where our current laws of physics simply don't apply. Then, about 13.8 billion years ago, the universe began to expand, but it wasn't an explosion within space, it was space itself expanding in all directions. In that moment, not just matter and energy but space and time came into existence. Before the Big Bang there was no before, because time didn't exist. It's a concept that challenges everything we know. Hawking suggests the universe's origin may not require a cause in the usual sense because there was no time for a cause to occur. In that first fraction of a second, the universe underwent cosmic inflation, expanding faster than the speed of light. Particles formed and vanished in bursts of energy. This chaotic moment set the stage for everything, atoms, stars, galaxies, and us. Black holes, regions where gravity is so intense not even light can escape. For decades they were seen as the ultimate cosmic dead ends, swallowing anything that crossed their event horizon. But Stephen Hawking changed that view. In the 1970s he proposed something revolutionary. Black holes aren't entirely black. They emit radiation, now known as Hawking radiation. Here's how it works. Even in a vacuum, quantum mechanics tells us that particles and antiparticles constantly appear and vanish. Near a black hole's event horizon these pairs can be split, one falls in, the other escapes as radiation. Over time this causes the black hole to lose mass and eventually, evaporate. This idea was groundbreaking. It linked general relativity, the physics of the very large with quantum mechanics, the physics of the very small. Black holes weren't just destructive, they were dynamic, evolving. But this discovery created a new puzzle. What happens to the information that falls into a black hole? Time feels like it flows in one direction, from past to future. But the laws of physics work just as well in reverse, so why does time seem to move forward? Hawking explores this mystery through three arrows of time. First is the thermodynamic arrow, tied to the second law of thermodynamics. In a closed system, entropy, or disorder, always increases. That shift from order to chaos defines much of what we experience. Ice melts, eggs break, clocks tick forward. Second is the psychological arrow, our perception. We remember the past, but not the future. Our minds are wired to experience time as a one-way street. Third is the cosmological arrow, the direction of the universe's expansion. Galaxies are moving apart, space itself is stretching. This too gives time its forward field. But what if the universe began to contract? Would time reverse? Would we remember the future instead of the past? Hawking doesn't offer definite answers, but he raises the questions that challenge our understanding. Time travel has fascinated our imagination, from H.G. Wells' The Time Machine to countless sci-fi films. But Stephen Hawking asks a more serious question. Could time travel actually be possible under the laws of physics? One idea involves wormholes, hypothetical tunnels through space-time sometimes called Einstein-Rosen bridges. In theory, a wormhole could connect two distant points in space, or even two different points in time. But there are problems. First, wormholes may be inherently unstable, collapsing before anything could pass through. Keeping one open would require exotic matter with negative energy density, something we've never observed. Even if stable wormholes existed, time travel brings serious paradoxes. The most famous is the grandfather paradox. If you went back in time and prevented your grandparents from meeting, would you still exist? To address this, Hawking proposed the chronology protection conjecture the idea that the laws of physics might prevent time travel to avoid such paradoxes. Even if the math allows it, reality might block it. One of modern physics' greatest goals is to find a theory of everything, a single framework that unites general relativity and quantum mechanics. General relativity explains gravity and large-scale structures like stars and galaxies. Quantum mechanics governs particles and forces on the smallest scales. 
both are incredibly accurate, but fundamentally incompatible. Hawking explores some leading ideas for unification. One is string theory, which proposes that fundamental particles are not points but tiny vibrating strings. Their vibrations determine their properties and string theory naturally includes gravity. Another contender is loop quantum gravity, which attempts to quantize space-time itself, suggesting space and time are not smooth but made of tiny discrete units. Both theories are promising but still speculative, their math is complex and experimental proof is limited. Hawking stresses that beauty isn't enough, a theory must be confirmed by nature. Still, he remains hopeful. With advances like gravitational wave detectors and quantum computing, we may be on the edge of major breakthroughs. A true theory of everything could reveal the full structure of reality, from the tiniest particles to the entire cosmos. In the final chapter of A Brief History of Time, Hawking confronts a profound question. What would it mean to fully understand the universe? The search for a theory of everything isn't just about equations, it's about uncovering the deepest workings of reality, what Hawking metaphorically calls knowing the mind of God. He doesn't use God in a religious sense. It's a poetic way to describe the ultimate goal, discovering the fundamental laws that govern everything, from the birth of stars to the tiniest particles. For Hawking, this quest is driven by awe and curiosity, not certainty. Science, he reminds us, is a process, not a final answer. The universe is vast and complex, and many mysteries still lie beyond our reach. But the pursuit itself is what makes us unique. Through observation, reason and imagination, we move closer to understanding the cosmos and ourselves. Hawking ends not with a conclusion but with wonder. Even if we never grasp everything, the journey, the questions, the exploration is what defines us. As he famously said, we are just an advanced breed of monkeys on a minor planet of a very average star, but we can understand the universe that makes us something very special. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There's so much more to explore together. Stay curious and we'll see you in the next adventure.